Welcome to Talking Jazz. My guest today is Mareike Wiening. She's tuning in with me from Cologne, Germany, but has also residencies, longtime residencies in New York and is a drummer, composer, educator, and just released a wonderful second release on Greenleaf Records called Future Memories. So I'm excited to talk with Marike. Yeah, Monika, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Of course. So yeah, I want to talk about this wonderful music that you just released. But, you know, we should start actually with your background because no prejudices, but the female drummers in jazz are still are very small. So it's interesting, I think, to know how you got attracted by the drums and, and kind of your pathway to New York. Give us a quick synopsis. Yeah, it's actually a longer story, but I'm coming from the piano, from classical piano. You know, the typical German way. When you're a kid, you're basically learning classical piano. And I did a lot of competitions in Germany, Jugendmusiziert. So I did that for many, many years and my teacher and also my parents, they kind of expected me to study classical music, but I was never into it in a way, you know, I, I did it because I was good in it and I, I like to practice, but I never really enjoyed that at all. Then eventually I started playing the flute, but there it was kind of the same. It was okay, but yeah, I, I didn't feel happy doing music in a way. And then I had a piano teacher who was a jazz piano player, but I studied classical p music with him. He introduced me to jazz and he took me to his shows. He used to play with a lot of great drummers in from Munich especially and in Bavaria as well. For some reason, I just got super fascinated by the drums. I also always like to dance and you know with the drums you have this independence going on and that's always fascinated me the most. Just like dancing basically. Then it was a funny coincidence because I was going on a um, student exchange to France Yeah, when I was 16, something like that. My student exchange partner basically he had a drum set at home and he was playing drums and he, he lived far outside of the city so once we got there we kind of were stuck in this small little village and we didn't have anything to do so we just played drums all day and he showed me a lot and when I came back to Germany I bought my first drum set and immediately took lessons. <laughs> yeah and then it was very fast I mean I, I kind of started pretty old like with 15, 16 like that. Yeah I, I was so into it I basically practiced drums all day, took lessons and was crazy about the drums and I also then got into jazz pretty quickly and then realized that I really love to play music and what it means actually to play music and play with people and to be on stage. So it was this totally different world I was in all of a sudden that I never thought about before. So yeah, that's that's the story basically. <laughs> that's a very cool story, you know, this, this idea of finding your passion, what speaks to you, right? There's yeah. always assumptions. Yeah, there's music in there, you know, trying to practice. Okay, let's take the regular pathways, but then, you know, finding out, well, that's, you know, who I am is, is, is just different. And this is what attracts me. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so funny because I can relate to it, you know, also growing up in Germany, we did the same exchange program I would go to France <laughs> it's just a very regular German pathway yeah and and so this new release so we're going to listen to uh, Northern Sail here as our first one give us a little background about that piece what to listen for before we dive in yeah so as a kid I grew up in Norway actually since then so it was like five or six years old when we moved there for a couple of years and since then I'm always going back to Norway at some point like usually in the summer for a summer break and I still have friends there I still speak the language and so this piece is just inspired by the summer in Norway usually we are on a sailboat going out with friends and you know just being outside in the nature on the water and being surrounded by this beautiful country and the, the beautiful people there this is just like, yeah, the feeling, Northern Sail. Wow, how cool. I, I didn't know that. And, and what a beautiful part to have in your life to get to go there. All right, let's have a listen. So this is uh, Northern Sail. So just imagine the beautiful landscape in the summer sailing in Norway. Yeah. This is from the 2021 release, Future Memories, and it features... Rich Perry on the tenor sax, and we have Alex Goodman on the guitar, Johannes Felcher on the bass, and Glenn Seleski on piano. Here is Northern Sail. Thank you. 
That was Northern Sail, a selection from the album Future Memories by my guest today, Mareike Wiening, who you heard on drums, but also is the composer of the music that we're listening to. You know, talking about composing, so so your sound, it's, it's very modern, contemporary jazz sound. There's a, a lot of complex rhythms in it and, and a very, you know, modern harmonic language and of course you sharing that you started out as a classical pianist gives a lot of cues where your knowledge in terms of melody and harmony all comes from but I, I'd be curious to to hear a little more about your composition approach how you pull music together how you decide what to put in an album and maybe this one especially that we're going to listen to El Escorial you know I've been a drummer and a side woman basically for for many many years coming to new york i came i moved in 2012 to do my master's degree after one year of doing my master's i met stefan harris the vibraphone player he was teaching there and i was always interested in composing music but never really did it yeah maybe also because being a drummer you don't interact with harmony and harmonic language on a daily basis. I mean, obviously you you listen to harmony, but you don't deal with the theory that much. For some reason, there was always kind of a barrier between me as a composer and and you know this whole technical stuff that I obviously couldn't use on the drums. So I really had to study only composition and then practice drum set. So this was like kind of separate. But Stefan Harris, he has a concept where he kind of combines everything. He combines playing the piano, arranging composition, ear training, playing in a band. So this is like one concept and it kind of caught me actually, because for some reason it made totally sense to not have these separate paths, but kind of combine everything with everything. The technique he's using is a little bit more complicated to explain, but but yeah, I, I studied it with him for a couple of months, like half a year, and then he told me Okay, he was actually very happy with the results. And he told me, okay, for my master's degree, I have basically one semester left. So the assignment is to get a band together and write more music, write more tunes to actually record an album, like an EP kind of thing for my graduation. And that was the first time where I actually in 2014, where I yeah asked people and Rich Perry was on there as well. And Alex Goodman as well, actually. So that was the first time basically being a band leader. And from that on, it kind of slowly, you know, processed and I changed some people and kind of, you know, like searched my way and searched my voice and figured out what I wanted to write and what I what I wanted to do as a band leader. Yeah. And then um, I recorded my debut album in 2018. It, re it got released in 2019. It's called Metropolis Paradise on Greenleaf music as well and features the same people, the same band, except Glenn Zaleski was replaced by Dan Tepfer because Glenn broke his elbow just a couple of days before the recording session. <laughs> and then basically Dan Tepfer, he learned the music overnight. It was amazing. Recorded the album. Future Memories Now, my second album, is basically the first album with the original crew. That's an important story and a, and a good story, you know, and the transition from being a, a side woman to band leader, I mean, it's not like that goes overnight. There's it's very different responsibilities and it's a very different way of, of approaching things. And often people don't realize, you know, you just think, oh, yeah, here you play drums and then you have a band. But yeah, it's crazy. And I, I learned it the hard way in a way. I mean, it's it was I never thought about it, actually, that it would be so difficult and so different as well. By the time and, and years go by and, and stuff like that, you learn a lot and then you realize, I hope I became a better side woman because of that, because all of a sudden you think about things that you never thought about before, just because you're a band leader. And that's really important also being mm -hmm. for being a side woman. It's crazy how different it is, actually. I absolutely agree. You know, the band that I assembled with my Shiro's, I by purpose took all ladies who know who have their own groups and, and, and lead their own project. And it helps so much, you know, you don't have the ones along that just keep complaining all the time yeah. about where's the dinner, but they understand. And it's important to understand what it takes yeah. to put that all together and yeah. take responsibility. So good for you. I, I kind of finished it with a Spanish group that I'm, or Spanish musicians that I used to play a lot before mm -hmm. COVID. <laughs> I hope that's going to happen again. And they are based in Madrid in Spain. So I was going there a lot to play 
and we basically kind of finished the song together in a small village outside of Madrid and that village is called El Escorial. That's why it's named like that. I love the geographic images that we get here. First we went to Norway, we were matching that. So now let's go to outside of Madrid, to match in the Spanish landscape and the partying and the uplifting atmosphere and, and dancing. He does his El Escorial and this is another selection from the album Future Memories. A Greenleaf 2021 release by my guest today, Marike Wiening, who is also on drums and with Rich Perry on tenor sax, Alex Goodman on guitar, Johannes Felcher on bass, and Glenn Zaleski on piano.
selection from the album Future Memories by my guest today, Mareike Wiening, who you also heard on drums and who is, of course, the composer of the music. We were talking just in general about composing music and getting inspired. And then 2020 happens. And I think your album was recorded like just before. And then you actually returned to Germany, at least to for for now throughout the pandemic you got a good taste from the new york life for six seven years and you back here it's different but you remember compare a little bit the jazz life in germany new york and what you're kind of seeing or thinking yeah i mean new york you're busy and you're exhausted all the time uh -huh. obviously you also have this enormous input that you get from musicians from amazing musicians the best actually in the world and and this is just so special yeah it's like a drug you, you take this input all the time but at the same time you're exhausted and it's very difficult and everything is super expensive so it's like great and bad it's like this, these two extremes and in germany everything is a little bit no more normal i would say like there obviously there are great musicians as well but they're more spread out you have to look for them but you also have more time because you don't have to be worried about money all the time and you get more money for playing music and for playing jazz especially so it's actually easier or even possible to be a playing musician and to be a jazz musician just living by playing and, and, and making money by, by playing concerts which i think is not really possible in the in new york so in that way it's also really great to be in Germany and to have this possibility to be a full-time musician. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, obviously you don't have this crazy input that you get from peers in New York. Yeah, it's both worlds or countries have their positive and negative aspects, obviously. So it's very different, actually. It's really hard to compare. For now, I'm really happy to be in Germany, actually, because I feel like in New York, it was almost too many years that I couldn't be a full-time musician and I really missed that. You know, I had to teach a lot, I had to worry about money. I don't know, I was super stressed out and almost didn't have enough time to practice, to compose. And here in Germany, especially with the pandemic now, I have a lot of time to practice and I enjoy it a lot, actually. So right now it's, it's great to be here. I have to say it's a little bit nicer in a way being a musician in Europe because the government takes care of culture. Especially now with the pandemic, there were a lot of scholarships, a lot of possibilities, a lot of money they put out to musicians. So I didn't have to worry at all. I was just composing over months and months. I kind of looked for projects I wanted to do. Yeah, I basically did whatever I wanted to do musically. So this was really, really nice. In the US or in New York, I sometimes feel like, okay, it's great because the scene is great, but actually they don't want, want you to be there, you know, because they don't support culture as much. I think it's a little sad sometimes. You know, that's a lot of interesting points and the difference it makes if there's a structure, a social structure that supports what you do as something that has value versus mm -hmm. when you always have to fight in a structure where you have to prove that what you do is worth it in terms of economically viable you know and, and it, it's put on in a position where you have to make it work for itself without the support of saying well there's other values to it too there's social value and cultural value and all mm -hmm. these things and not everything is directly money equals and that's very tricky you know and we i talk with my students and my actually we just talked about that yesterday mm -hmm. why you know there's so many wonderful things coming out of sweden well because <laughs> the kids in sweden get free music lessons and the country believes in the value of the arts you know they support culture and they give money to musicians to do whatever you know they feel like doing or to support the art yeah that's very important i think because Otherwise, it's not gonna gonna happen. Yeah. And as a result, you know, you have the Den X who have Spotify, who took over the whole world, and the Max Martins who write the greatest pop songs. And eventually, it does translate, you know, into these other values too. But you have to get it kickstarted. Well, you know, that kind of 
folds into your next tune and idea is unpredictable. From what I hear, you know, the way the tune is constructed, you have this little motive and you just keep moving it around in different places. Is that kind of what it's hinting to? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know at all what, what I was going for. And usually I have a clear picture in my head what I'm kind of, what I want to go to or what I want to compose. And with that one, I only had this little melody that I had in, in the beginning. And then I kind of developed developed it in many 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 different ways and at the end I you know took pieces here and there and there and then kind of glued it all together so and that's part of it too you know the any tune or composing or writing is taking ideas and putting them together in unique ways so I love the way you did it in that one so let's have a listen then so this is called an idea is unpredictable this is another selection from future memories the new album by my guest today, who you also will hear on drums, Marike Wiening. Here we go.
that was an idea is unpredictable a selection from the album future memories by my guest today Mariah Kevining who you also heard on the drums we'll hear a few more from that album so this is brand new it was recorded right before Before the pandemic hit, you put it out during the pandemic, which is kind of a tricky thing too, but it worked. This next one, as far as I was hearing, you were playing a bit on the idea of, of rhythm changes, which I find interesting. So obviously it's a, you know, what jazz musicians often do is, is find new ways and new sets of harmonies to have a new take on an old structure. And so this rhythm changes idea is, is based on a song called I Got Rhythm from the Gershwins a long time ago and became this framework for musicians to take off. I would say like after the blues, maybe it's the next popular one to, to be used. And we were talking about the difference in in. German, living in Germany and, and working in, in the U.S., I wanted to think a little bit also about the education system, you know, in, in Germany versus the U.S., because I remember doing a workshop in Karlsruhe with one of my friends, and I brought a rhythm changes tune, and I had some alternate changes, and my host at the time, he said, we're not interested in rhythm changes, <laughs> the students are not interested in that, we do other things. Well, you know, meaning what I hear a lot, you know, maybe not necessarily, you know, no, we're not teaching it, but the way jazz is approached, even in, in education, is, is more in this modern, open, avant-garde type format versus the formulas in the U.S. where you teach, okay, this is the scale that goes with this chords and, you know, you have to learn all the bebop phrases and go for it. You studied on both sides. What's your perception on that? Yeah, I think actually it's very, very important to, to know the tradition and actually to, that's why I, I enjoyed being in, in the U.S. and learn the tradition from the source. Yeah, because I think there's no way around it and then eventually you take this and, and make it your own and, and kind of, you know, combine it with other, maybe other styles or other influences and mix and match it. And, and then eventually it becomes your voice. But I think originally um, everyone should learn the tradition. I think that's very important. It's right. But I think there's some differences in approaches in the way jazz is taught in the different kinds oh, yeah. of Yeah. yeah, also in different schools, I feel like even in Germany, I feel like it's different, you know, in Cologne versus, I don't know, Nuremberg or Munich or something like that. So it's very, very different. And I studied in Mannheim. I did my bachelor's in Mannheim and did one exchange year in Copenhagen. And then I, I came to New York and Copenhagen was totally different because they don't care about tradition or about anything. They basically go and say, find your voice it's all about finding your voice and finding your passion but they don't care if if there's a tradition behind it as a source or base basically maybe it was also i was too young going there but i had a lot of difficulties to understand this approach mm -hmm. coming from germany especially because in germany or in Mannheim, it was a little bit like the us like you're saying okay you're learning this and this and this and this and this is how you learn it and this is everyone has to learn this and then that's it basically that's jazz and then going to copenhagen where they say okay this is all doesn't matter and you don't have to learn this you don't need to know this you need to express yourself as an artist and i'm like there and i'm like okay how do i do this i have no idea so it was really difficult. Maybe it's a process and I feel like Copenhagen is great. The student or like the school there is, is great as well, but maybe for a master's program or like not for a bachelor's program. That's interesting, you know, and jazz is often compared to being a language. So, you know, it's kind of like learning the language and you kind of have to know the vocabulary you know one thing i do think is important for everyone especially what evolved with the black lives matter over the last years to acknowledge that this comes out of african-american traditions and exactly. and we should honor that yeah and learn the language without the dialect right and maybe you can put in the dialect later you know like maybe you It's possible i feel like because it's important to to kind of keep it going and keep it forward and Obviously, a Swedish musician or a Norwegian musician is playing a blues differently than, than an American. Yeah, I hear you that I, I have the same opinion that you, you have to learn the tradition and know where it's coming from and then 
you can do your own thing and find your voice from there tell us about the ri changes what did you do to those rhythm changes so it's actually called rich changes but i tell you the story why so rich perry he always complained that there's no normal changes or rhythm sec like rhythm changes in my music so i mean complained in a in a funny way in a, so i said okay he's gonna get rhythm changes <laughs> and i figured out yeah that this was actually a really difficult tune to to work on for me because as you said like rhythm changes you know all these amazing songs so i didn't feel like there i have anything to add it was really difficult and then yeah i looked for a melody that kind of fits to me that, that i would write and then figured out that some of the changes i would totally change and that I, I, i don't that's not me so i changed some changes here and there basically it's rhythm changes and i added a couple of things you know the bass line and in the in the b part so yeah and then i showed it to rich and he was like oh god you cannot play this <laughs> and i said like man that's not my fault it's like you wanted to have rhythm changes so you have to play it now and that's why i called the song like rich changes but it's like a you know like a game so it's rich changes but also changes for rich and yeah great word game and and great game on the changes you know and that's a skill too to take a, a given structure and find something that works that honors what the framework is and, and and find a new way to approach it so i think it worked out really fun and really great now it, it's actually really fun but it was a long long way to to get there but sometimes it's like that well let's have a listen so this is the rich or ri changes from the album future memories a 2021 greenleaf release by my guest today mariki weening who you will hear on drums and then of course Was Rich Perry on the tenor sax playing the changes and Alex Goodman on guitar, Johannes Felcher on bass and Glenn Zaleski on piano. Thank you. 
Sky Changes, a selection from the album Future Memories by my guest today, Mariah Kevining. And we get one more taste, one last taste of the music. I'm actually looking forward. We get to collaborate together in May for a, a project in Germany, an international exchange and possibly more. There's future yeah. memories, you know, we'll, we'll create those. What's your outlook here and your next step? How are you navigating? Are you planning to go back to New York eventually or making any plans? I mean, being here now for quite a while, there's a lot of projects that are kind of came together and so there's a lot going on in Germany and I mean right now the numbers are going high so I hope that there's not going to be too many cancellations but the best scenario for me would be being based basically in Germany but then going back to New York being going back and forth just the same way I did it before but being based in New York where I actually came to Germany or came to Europe like every two, three months. And I did the same thing just shortly before COVID, where I basically already moved more or less or settled to Germany, where I came back to New York a lot. And that was pretty much perfect for me because for me, it's also important now to be with my family and, you know, be with my parents more. Yeah, that would be the best thing of being here, but going to New York as much as possible. That's really cool that you were able to get the roots in all places and, and you mm -hmm. can go in between. And on this last album, The Other Soul, I, I love the way you have the harmonies between the guitar and the saxophone and have them play the melody in harmony. That makes a really cool sound. Is there any meaning behind The Other Soul? What's behind the tune? There's actually not a big story behind that tune. I was looking for a title because I didn't have one. And then we played it on tour and every time at every show I asked the audience if they have an idea. It was funny because there were a lot of ideas, also kind of stupid ones, but it always went into this kind of same direction, you know, the same topic. The other soul was basically the best that I liked but it was always like soulmates I think was one or like a friendship or kind of like the same topic so I thought that that's also nice to to get this feedback from the audience you know it's really fun to talk and chat and think about music and other things we are going to make music very soon good luck to all of us to navigate these last this last wave and find new ways of interaction so thanks Mariki for for joining me today. Of course, thank you for having me. Here is one last one, The Other Soul, a selection from Mariah Kevining's new release, Future Memories on Greenleaf, released 2021, featuring Rich Perry on tenor sax, Alex Goodman guitar, Johannes Falscher on bass, and Glenn Zaleski on piano. What's the best place to find your music, Mariah? To my homepage, I guess, or to greenleafmusic.com, you can find the the music on the label through the label and then obviously all the common sources like spotify itunes you can find me as well on, on facebook and instagram if you want to get a touch mariki being m-a-r-e-i-k-e -E and weaning w-i-e-n-i-n-g and i assume dot com all right <laughs> thanks again mariki here is the other soul
you for listening to Talking Jazz. My guest today was drummer, composer, educator, Mareike Wiening. Tune in for Talking Jazz every Thursday at 11 a.m. and every Monday at 7 p.m. right here on WETF 105.7 FM in South Bend, Indiana or online at wetfthejazzstation.org. Also find videos of previous shows on YouTube on the Monica Hersick channel. That's M-O-N-I-K-A-H-E-R-Z-I-G. Subscribe to get the newest updates. Thank you for listening.